Hello students, welcome back to Optics and Modern Physics course. I am Dr. Dipti Kulkarni, uh, Assistant Professor at Kiatis College of Engineering, Kolhapur. Uh, we are discussing a first unit of this course that is interference diffraction and polarization and uh, in this uh, lesson we will discuss resolving power of diffraction grating and its applications. Uh, so basically the objectives of this unit is to study the fundamental properties of light like dif interference diffraction polarization. Uh, we have derived equations for bright and dark fringes due to interference uh, of light through thin films. We have discussed diffraction uh, grating theory and in this video we will discuss its applications and resolving power. Uh, uh, we will see the concept of double diffraction in next video optical activity and their engineering applications. So, in this lesson basically we will uh, see the resolving power and we will derive the equation for resolving power of diffraction grating and we will see some applications of diffraction grating. So, uh, when we derive resolving power of any optical instrument, the Rayleigh's criteria plays, and plays a crucial role because any optical instrument, uh, its resolving power is obtained at just resolve condition and this just resolve condition is uh, given by Rayleigh. So, basically what is resolving power? Resolving power of any optical instrument is its ability to resolve or to separate to uh, images of two closely spaced objects. So, uh, the three types of uh, images that we can obtain, when the images are well merged with each other, here the principal maximum are very close or overlapped with each other and hence we can get uh, merged images, we cannot resolve these images. Or we can get well resolved images when the principal maximum of these two uh, images, they are very uh, well, they are uh, well apart from each other we can see the, these two images far apart from each other that means well resolved whereas uh, the just resolved condition is obtained when the principal maximum of one line coincides with the first to secondary minimum of other line so uh, any optical instrument uh, 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 show when this when it shows it, this particular condition we get this just resolve uh, just resolve images and we find out resolving power of optical instrument at this condition so this uh, condition uh, is obtained when principal maximum of one line coincides with the first to secondary minimum of other uh, so we will find out resolving power of diffraction grating at this condition only uh, resolving power of diffraction grating it is given by uh, ratio of wavelength of a line in the spectrum to the least difference in the wavelength of next line that can be seen as just separate. So, resolving power its theoretical formula is lambda by d lambda. So, to derive expression for this lambda by d lambda consider diffraction grating this is plane of diffraction grating the light uh, incident on this diffraction grating it is dual chromatic light it has wavelengths lambda and lambda plus d lambda so the incident light it has wavelength lambda and lambda plus d lambda so when this light is incident on diffraction grating we get central maximum and as we know our equation of diffraction grating uh, a plus b sin theta equal to n lambda from this equation we know that theta is directly proportional to lambda that means as the wavelength of incident light increases angle of diffraction will increase so here uh, the wavelength lambda it gets diffracted by angle say theta n for nth order then wavelength lambda plus d lambda it is slightly greater than this wavelength. So, this wavelength get diffracted by slightly greater angle that is theta n plus d theta. So, we can write equations for this wavelength for this principal mag, uh, for this principal maximum of nth order for wavelength lambda and lambda plus d lambda as for lambda our equation is a plus b sin theta n because angle of diffraction is theta n equal to n lambda and for lambda plus d lambda we can write equation as 
a plus b since diffraction grating is same a plus b is same sin now angle of diffraction for lambda plus d lambda is theta n plus d theta is equal to n order is same into lambda that is wavelength is lambda plus d lambda so we have written these two equations now as per Rayleigh's criterion we can see these two lines that corresponds to lambda and lambda plus d lambda just resolved when principal maximum of lambda plus d lambda coincides with the first secondary minimum of lambda so this is possible when we add a small path difference of lambda by n to the equation and when this minima will have the same angle that is theta n plus d theta so uh, we can write the equation for this secondary minimum as a plus b sin theta n plus d theta equal to n lambda plus lambda by n. Now, if we see equation 2 and 3, LHS are same, so we can equate the RHS. Uh, so, equating equations 2 and 3, we get n into lambda plus d lambda is equal to n lambda plus lambda by n. Let us multiply n inside the bracket, we get n lambda plus n into d lambda. So, when we multiply this n inside the bracket, n lambda, n lambda gets cancelled out. Lambda, this implies n into d lambda is equal to lambda by n because this n lambda, n lambda gets cancelled out. So, n into d lambda is equal to lambda by n. Now, taking this d lambda on this side and capital N, N on this side, we get this equation that is lambda by d lambda is equal to small n into capital N. Now, this is practical formula to find out resolving power of diffraction grating. Theoretical formula is this lambda by d lambda and practically we can find out resolving power of diffraction grating by this small n into capital N. From this equation, uh, we, uh, understood, we understand that resolving power of diffraction grating is directly proportional to order of diffraction and resolving power of diffraction grating is directly proportional to capital N that is number total number of lines on diffraction grating. Uh, so, this is the derivation for resolving power we can find out resolving power of any diffraction grating by using this equation. So, we have seen the theory of diffraction grating and we have seen this resolving power of diffraction grating. So, here is the reflection spot for you. Can you predict application of diffraction grating based on principle of separation of wavelengths? Uh, in previous video, I told you that when white light is incident on diffraction grating, we get colored spectral lines. So, based on this separation of wavelength, can you predict any application of diffraction grating? Uh, you can think for a while and then you can answer. So, uh, I hope you have got your answer. This is the white light that incident on diffraction grating. This is our dispersive element that means diffraction grating. Now, if we put exit slit, then we can get a monochromatic light. For example, if we rotate diffraction grating like this and we get this orange colored spectra, uh, orange colored light come out of this exit slit. Now, if we rotate this diffraction grating and now blue colored light that you know, come out of this exit slit, that means incident light is polychromatic light the light that we obtain through this slit it is monochromatic light that means we can convert polychromatic light into monochromatic light with the help of diffraction grating and an exit slit that means it works it can work as monochromator so diffraction gratings uh, are used in monochromator so this is the first application of diffraction grating uh, so, in monochromators, diffraction gratings are used to separate the uh, different wavelengths as well as it can be used as a wavelength detector. By using the equation a plus b sin theta is equal to n lambda, we can uh, uh, obtain the wavelength of incident light. So, uh, in monochromators, diffraction grating is used. Now, uh, as I told you, diffraction grating can be used for detection of wavelength of incident light. So, this is the second application. Uh, in biopsy examination, diffraction grating is used to detect the wavelength that is emitted by deceased cell. So, generally this biopsy examination is conducted for cancer detection and uh, here that uh, tissues 
uh, from that removed uh, patch uh, tissues are excited by a certain wavelength therein monochromators are used the, then th that tissues they emit the absorbed wavelength if healthy tissue is there the emitted wavelength is same as that of absorbed wavelength but if uh, it is diseased the tissue then the wavelength or uh, emitted wavelength is different than that of absorbed wavelength and from this we can detect the uh, disease like cancer uh, we can also detect uh, the stage of cancer from that uh, emitted wavelength so we can use diffraction grating for biopsy examination in spectroscopy uh, again uh, monochromators are used to uh, used to send certain wavelength to excite the uh, molecular bonds and then uh, the emitted wavelength is detected and by detecting the molecular bonds uh, we can find out the chemical composition of that uh, compound so it is used in chemistry as well as in astronomy uh, again uh, certain wavelength is uh, can be obtained from uh, diffraction grating so uh, we can use it in um, optical fiber communication system we know that optical fiber transmits optical signals but they gives uh, highest uh, they give uh, uh, highest efficiency uh, at a certain wavelength so that optimum wavelength can be obtained with the help of diffraction grating and in holography uh, diffraction phenomenon is used hologram act as a diffraction grating and we know that holography is used to produce three dimensional images uh, it can also be used as a sensor of fluid properties so these are the applications of diffraction grating and most importantly the application of diffraction grating it is in chirped pulse amplification lasers so uh, in uh, this cpa technique diffraction grating system is used to expand the laser pulse then it is amplified by the amp power amplifiers then it is compressed by again laser system and we get a femtosecond laser pulse with high intensity and this cpa lasers they are used for uh, lasik surgeries by the ophthalmologist so thank you so much uh, we have uh, discussed uh, applications of diffraction grating theory of diffraction grating and resolving power of diffraction grating in our next lecture uh, we will discuss polarization thank you